Hi, my name is Phil Parnham. I work for Blue Box Partners and I just want to take a few moments to talk you through how to use a damp meter or a moisture meter as some might call it. Um, the type I've got is uh, by Protometer, it's a survey master, but as I say other models and types are available and um, this particular type has got two sorts of damp meter attached to it. The first one, which is probably the most popular, is the um, conductance uh, damp meter. It has got the uses the pins to test whatever surface you put it in and as you can hear it has got um, audio so when it gets up to that damp level it will sound, sound off as well. Probably hear it there. Um, now the other type, uh, if you just press, press a button, um, is the capacitance uh, moisture meter on this flat plate on the back. And the advantage about this is it doesn't work on pins, it sort of uh, uses a field of capaci capacitance, they call it, if I can say it. Um, and, and that is claimed to have the ability to look behind a surface uh, for moisture. So consequently, um, the, the, the pins might just uh, be able to test the first few millimetres where this um, flat plate uh, moisture meter might be able to look deeper into the wall surface. So that's a, two different types. But before you use it, you need to calibrate it. Um, that's what the manufacturers suggest and they provide you with this little calibration uh, fit in and you just fit that across um, your pins and it should give you, uh, as well as an audible sound, it should give you uh, a reading of around about 18 uh, plus or minus 1 um, and uh, that's coming easily within that so that's calibrated and ready to go. Just wanted to go through a little illustration of the differences between the two different types of moisture meter using this bottle of water. And as you can see, virtually full. So using the um, conductance uh, moisture meter, with, using the pins, if you put that on the surface, not through the skin, um, but on the surface, then absolutely no reading whatsoever, uh, despite there have been obviously a lot of water in there. But then switch to the capacitant, the flat plate uh, moisture meter at the back, put it on the same bottle, and as the manufacturer said, it uh, looks below the surface and then obviously picks up quite a lot of moisture in there. So uh, uh, signs signs off its buzzer. So that's just a, a very simple way of showing how the different types actually work. Okay, I've explained the general functioning of a moisture meter, but, but now I just want to show you where I take moisture meter readings. Um, and uh, just chosen a bit of the inside face, the outside wall. And uh, most commentators say that you really ought to start, uh, if there's no carpet in that is, um, in, in the edge of the floor. And, and here I've got it on uh, uh, the uh, conductance uh, mode. Um, using the pins, uh, just the edge of the floor, um, the bottom of the skirting, because that can be um, uh, quite revealing, and uh, then just uh, the middle of the skirting, and then just a above the skirting, and then at about, um, I suppose, 300 millimetre centres up until about a metre or, 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 or thereabouts. As you can see, I'm only lightly pressing my pins against the wall because really if you use any more force then you could damage the decorations and you could be facing a claim from the uh, property owner which is something preferably you'd like to avoid. So, so that may be an issue because um, in a way um, all you're testing is the very surface layer of this wall and there could be some dampness lurking beneath. So I guess that's the reason of having a moisture meter with the two different types. Um, the search mode allegedly does allow the meter to look behind the surface. So if you switch modes um, and then repeat the same on the skirting, remember it's on audio so if it does spot damp it should sing out. 
um, just above. Now the manufacturers say you should take it off and place it on each time. You shouldn't, you shouldn't slide it. Um, and it's really important to get as much contact between that flat plate and the surface as possible. And um, okay, I'm ignoring the numbers here. I'm just uh, looking at the little dial within the colours of the lights and listening for that beeping. But, but in this particular location, I didn't find any dampness. So I'd note that on my site notes. And then uh, seek to do the same thing round about every metre and a half, two metres. Okay, um, using a moisture meter against the wall is fair enough when you've got you know, a reasonable large expanse of wall to uh, put your meter into. But um, it's really important to get moisture meter readings around the side of a chimney breast. And in this case, as you can see, the uh, bookshelf just prevents you from getting your normal pins on your moisture meters um, just in the side there. So there's a whole lot uh, as all parts of that chimney brush you simply can't test. Now um, one easy way around that is to use uh, an extension to the pins um, that, that many uh, moisture meter manufacturers provide. You simply um, put that in the side there uh, and now that becomes your moisture meter um, and just test it to make sure it's working and then what you should be able to do is just simply go into the corner much more flexibly and test those parts that you need to. And in this case, no moisture, but that's a good result. Okay, right, um, we've looked at generally uh, how the moisture meter works and um, in terms of where you take the readings, you know, in terms of the spacings and locations on the skirt and the wall. But um, this is how we can use it to sort of follow a trail. I don't know if you can see, but this part of the wall is, is visually damp. Well, at least it's uh, staining down at low level. Um, but it could just be that, it could just be staining. It might not be damp at all. And that's where obviously you've got to use your moisture meter to try and identify whether it is damp and if it is, the extent of it. So um, what I'll use first is just the, um, uh, the two pins, the uh, uh, conductance moisture meter. And uh, as you'll probably be able to see and hear, um, as soon as you pop it in, it goes really high. It, it's um, making a lot of noise, but also registering um, readings in around the high 80s, um, low 90s in, in, in some respects. And just to emphasize that that's what they call a wood moisture equivalent. It has no specific meaning uh, apart from just uh, really trying to give you a relative reading that it's, it's very damp, um, it's very wet. Um, you only get specific readings where you put the pins in timber. So for example, if we put in the skirt in, it says 27.1 and because this meter, like most moisture meters, are calibrated for timber, then that reading of 27.1 is actually meaningful. And I think most commentators say that above about 20%, timber is at risk of rot and other problems. So, so this, this needs action, this needs repair. But um, once you've identified this damp area, then you've got to see how extensive it is. And um, really, you've just got to map out um, the areas of, of dampness um, into the sunny bit. And, and it's beginning to drop off, as you can hear. So it finishes probably around there. So, so that enables you to see that uh, the bottom, whole bottom part of this wall is, is quite damp. Um, the other thing I just want to emphasize here, and it's just switched itself off, is um, the damage that the pins can do. So um, if you put your pins just on the surface there, so it doesn't damage, then there's no reading. 
but if you just put a little bit more pressure on and just go a few millimeters well parts of a millimeter below the surface then it registered as reading and i don't know if you can see but it just forms two little pinholes which a lot of owners might be a little upset about so again the option is just to change to the capacitance and then without damaging it hopefully get the same sort of measurements but in this case it's registering higher up and in these cases much higher up so there's a discrepancy between the two different sorts of moisture meters and in my view that's not a problem because it's all information to help your analysis just make a note of that in your site notes and so you can analyze it later on uh, when you're writing up the report right i've just switched to this side of the opening because i just want to sort of illustrate how moisture meters can be easily fooled my view is is really although they look fancy and sophisticated that they're just a, a battery and a couple of pins connected by wires and they can easily be fooled by things like salts and other contaminants in the plaster uh, and, and again um, you might just just see on the film that the rising well rising dampness the dampness at the bottom of this wall has, has brought with it um, some impurities, some salts, maybe from the ground or from the bricks and plaster themselves, and deposited them on the surface. Also here, um, along the edge of the opening, there's, there's probably a little uh, metal uh, plaster bead just to cover the, the edge of the wall then, and as you can see, it's rusting. Now, these salts, themselves can conduct electricity. So even, let's assume the dampness has been completely stopped here. Um, if you put your moisture meter in these sorts of salts, then the salts themselves, uh, and I'll just switch it over to the right sort of damp meter, sorry about that. The salts themselves can actually um, conduct um, electricity and give a reading. So, so that's the problem where uh, dampness has been resolved but these salts have been left in the plaster and, and that might fool you into thinking it's still damp. Same occurs on the metal that will obviously conduct uh, electricity and current so, so that will even though it's not damp will, will register a reading. So all the time you've got to be using your judgment um, and just taking account of what you can see uh, uh, as well as the readings that this gives you.